Hey, homeschoolers. Are you in a new season of homeschooling? I am. After 25 years of teaching my own six kids and helping to teach my friends, children, and even teaching a class, I am officially retired. And as I faced the time this month when my youngest will be going off to college, I had a decision to make. Was I going to continue speaking to homeschoolers, creating curriculum and other resources for homeschool families, or was I going to do something else? What you might not know is that I have really not had any desire to go back to practicing as a psychologist, even though I am done homeschooling, it just isn't a good fit for me as an extrovert to do one-on-one -on -one counseling. And I prefer to speak to groups of people, to speak to homeschool families individually at conferences. And I absolutely love writing. In fact, I wanted to be a writer and speaker when I was in graduate school. So it really wasn't a very difficult decision for me to make, although I was offered a job opportunity working for the VA, something that I loved doing when I was doing my internship. So I made the decision that I was going to continue with my Homeschool Sanity podcast and writing curriculum under fun to learn books. So what about you? Are you facing a new season of homeschooling? Maybe you have a child going off to college or starting trade school or just starting a new job for the first time. Maybe you have a new middle schooler or a new high schooler. Maybe you are into the meteor elementary years with your child and it's no longer preschool and kindergarten and you feel like things are getting serious. Maybe you have a new home. Maybe one or both of you has a new job. Maybe you are homeschooling other children for the first time. I hear from many homeschoolers who are going to be bringing older children home from school to join their homeschool. Whatever it is that is going on with you that is making it a new season, I have some tips for you today to make the most of that new season. And I'm going to be using these tips as well in my new season. So the first tip I have for you is to consider how far you've come. Usually we want to jump to my next tip first, but we want to look back and think about everything that we have accomplished by the grace of God. Sometimes looking back is going to produce tears, hopefully not tears of regret. It could be tears of joy for the amazing years you have experienced with your family in homeschooling. If you are just getting started, I want you to know that you have come far as well. You have done all the research, you've read all the books, you've watched the YouTube videos, maybe you even attended a homeschool conference, and you have come far in your homeschooling journey too. But for those of us who have some years under our belts, we will probably consider the great times that we've had. Maybe you no longer have a preschooler and that can cause you to have some bittersweet tears because of course it's much easier to teach an older child. In some respects it is, <laughs> uh, but you might just have some fond, fond memories of the great fun that you have had in your homeschooling thus far. I know I do. And it's hard to let go of the books and the curriculum and the idea that you're gonna be doing these really fun activities, uh, maybe with 
your homeschooling friends who have kids that age. And if that is in the past and it brings you to tears, I just want you to know that it is okay to have a little boohoo session. Even though you know you should be grateful for all the good times that you've had, it is okay to be sad that those times are over. And that is the case for all of us. Even if you are moving from fourth grade to fifth grade, you're not going to have that child be a fourth grader again. And if it was a wonderful experience, it can bring some sadness. So just let it be what it is. Let the sadness come. Let the tears come. Feel your feelings. Let it be okay. And I promise you that you will be sad for a shorter period of time than if you try to stifle those emotions. So the next thing that I would like you to do as you consider how far you've come in your homeschooling is to go over some photos. Now, I know I just said, let the feelings come, <laughs> let the tears come, and looking at photos may bring some of those tears again. But so much of the time for me, when I look at old photos, I just feel joy. I smile. I'm smiling the whole time I'm looking at the photos of my family as we were homeschooling throughout the years and doing great co-op activities with our friends. And I encourage you to do that. I just did this last night. I was looking through some photos and it is amazing how many great things you don't recognize in the moment that you're experiencing them. So look at your photos. See what it is that you taught your children, that you experienced together, that you learned together. And it is important to do that as you consider a new season ahead. If you want to scrapbook them, that would be great. I love to scrapbook, but you certainly don't have to. Just creating maybe a folder of your favorites that you can have on your computer, that you can send to a digital photo frame. Maybe you will find some photos that you want to enlarge, that you can look at and enjoy and have hanging or sitting on a table in your home. Next, I encourage you, after you... Uh, After you've had some tears, gone over the photos, maybe even looked through your lesson planner from years past, it is time for gratitude. I am overcome with gratitude for the opportunity that I have had to raise six children. I know it's so cliche and everyone says it, but the years have flown by. I honestly cannot believe that it has been a quarter century since I have been homeschooling my kids. And I am amazingly grateful. I'm just overwhelmed with gratitude, especially because God was the one who called me to homeschool. It wasn't my idea. I wasn't like I thought, oh, this is the best way to educate my kids. This is my plan. It wasn't my plan. And I am so thankful that the Lord stopped my plan from going forward and called me to this incredible lifestyle. And it is one of the reasons why I am so committed going forward in this new season to continue to encourage homeschoolers. I want every family who is called to homeschool to have the joy and the blessings in it that I have had. So consider what you are grateful for in how far you have come. So that is step number one or tip number one is to consider how far you've come. And then we want to take the next step, which is to consider how far you and God want you to go. So you might have had this idea that when you started homeschooling that there was no way you were going to do high school. And now having done it and realizing that it is not as scary or as difficult as you thought it would be, that you might 
consider homeschooling high school? Is God calling you to do that? Have you learned new things? Have you seen new evidence? Maybe you have listened to the podcast episode that I did with Carla Marie Williams and you are super inspired. You want to help your kids find their own way and learn what it is that they want to learn to reach their goals. But consider how far it is that you and God want you to go. It might be that you don't want to homeschool for high school. I'm certainly not going to tell you that you have to. You might have changed your thinking about it since the time that you started. But regardless of whether you plan to continue homeschooling all the way through as I have or stopping before high school, it is a great time in this new season for you to reevaluate your goals. What is the reason that you began homeschooling in the first place? And have you reached your goals for that in the process? I really didn't know what my goals were for homeschooling because it wasn't my idea at the beginning, but I did want my children to have a good self-esteem and it has accomplished that goal for us. My kids were really insulated from bullying and um, just really uh, discouraging people who were not good friends for them. That It definitely has had that goal fulfilled for us. Having a close family was so important for me, and that has been something that homeschooling has far exceeded my expectations. It has been an absolute delight and it continues to be how close we are as a family and how my siblings are um, close friends. So I am, I am delighted. So reevaluate your goals for homeschooling. Is homeschooling meeting those goals or do you have new goals? I didn't understand how important it was homeschooling was in terms of building my kids' faith and shaping their worldview. And if I were starting over now with homeschooling, that would be one of my very top goals. Do you have a new goal for homeschooling that you want to achieve? Next, this is an excellent time for you to reconsider the curriculum you are using or the approach to homeschooling that you are using. Perhaps you pulled your children out of a traditional school to homeschool, possibly during the pandemic. So many families did do that. And you wanted to just use curriculum that was similar to what the school was using because that made sense to you. You didn't know for sure if you were going to be sending your children back to school. You might still not be sure of that. And so it makes sense for you to use something that is familiar familiar to you as someone who was probably schooled in a traditional way um, and makes sense for your children who are accustomed to that type of learning. But maybe it's time for you to consider something else. Perhaps you would like to use a unit study approach or a Charlotte Mason approach or an unschooling approach or you want to use a classical approach. Or you want to be like me and be more eclectic and choose the favorite aspects of any approach that you are um, introduced to and make it work for your family. This is an excellent time for you to consider that. And then finally, it is a great time for you to reconsider activities activities that you and your family are participating in together and activities that each of your children are participating in as well. One of the number one stressors that I see for homeschooling families is being overcommitted. They are taking their kids to multiple sports and classes and activities and church volunteer events um, so many things and that is what is making homeschooling less than satisfactory, less than joyful for them. And so 
this is an excellent time for you to think about and pray about whether or not there are some activities that you want to drop, need to drop, or whether there are some activities that you want to add. If there is something that would really bless you and help you reach your other homeschooling goals, then this is a great time for you to consider adding those activities. So we have talked so far about step number one, which is to consider how far you've come. And then step number two, which is consider how far you and God want you to go. Where are you headed now in this new season? And then finally, I would encourage you to consider your fields. I was raised in a farming community and I worked in the fields in the summers starting in my middle school years. And one of the things that I learned, and we can learn this from the Bible as well, is that when we have been growing food, we're, we're growing grains, we're growing plants, corn, soybeans, uh, this is what I was uh, working around, you want to have some seasons where you let fields rest. This is very, very difficult <laughs> for us. And it was difficult for people in Bible times to not grow on a particular field because if you don't grow on a field, then you're not going to make money, right? And, and so it requires faith on our part, trust in God that if we let a field go fallow for a season, that God is still going to get us where we want to go. He's still going to provide for us. And you may feel that way as well, that there are some things that you know you should put down for a season, stop doing for a season, but it's hard to trust that the Lord is going to see you through that. Are you going to regret it? And one thing I can just remind you of is that if you do regret it, even if you take a semester off, a year off, you will not ruin your life or your child's life. You will not. You can absolutely go back to it. If you decide that, you know what, we stopped doing chess club this year and we missed it so much. This is where my kids' friendships really flourish is when we go to chess club. No problem. Pick it back up. And actually, you have grown in that process because you've learned how valuable chess club is to your family. My kids have never done chess club. I'm just using that as an example. So consider some fields of your homeschooling to let rest for this new season. Next, you want to pick rocks. This is one of the things that I did in the summers when the farmer that I worked for had a field that he wanted to use for growing a crop. Typically, that's what he would be doing. He would ask us to go in first and get all the big rocks out of that field. This was very hard work. And the picking rock process in our homeschooling is also very hard work, but it is so important. We don't want to be driving our tractor down the row and run into a big rock that is going to damage our very valuable equipment, right? So what are some of the rocks that are in our homeschools that we want to be picking during this new season? It could be disorganization. I have talked so much about disorganization and developing routines. I have, I'm sure, talked about the importance of meal planning, um, just having a good um, schedule, a good routine for yourself and your kids to give them structure, to give yourself structure. I've talked about bedtimes, getting up at the same time every day approximately, and especially going to bed at a decent time, about getting exercise. If any of those things, I've talked about marriage. If your marriage is has not been a priority and you know that that is going to be a potential roadblock in the future. If you, you don't know what you're eating, you aren't getting the exercise that you need, you aren't getting the sleep that, you're, that you need, 
then these are rocks that need to be picked up and moved out of your homeschooling field. And I can tell you that, as I did at the beginning, that picking up rocks is very hard work. It is, these are heavy rocks. And if you try to pick up all of them in one go, you're going to be exhausted and possibly injured. So when we picked rocks, we would have multiple goes at it. And so that is what I recommend to you too. Just pick up a couple of rocks in your homeschooling life, your homeschooling family, and work on those in this new season. Don't try to pick up every rock in one go. Okay, so let some fields rest. Pick some rocks out of some other fields and then work on growing something new. I think this is the number one tip that I'm giving you in this episode. A new season is time to grow something new. Novelty is so, so important for our motivation. It's important for our kids' motivation. Desiring novelty doesn't mean that we're immature, that we're not disciplined, that we're not spiritual. It means that we're human. God has designed us to seek out the new because it just gives our brain chemistry a boost. It provides that motivation. It's interesting. We're, we're engaged in the process. And so this is an excellent time to try that new curriculum, try a new approach to homeschooling, try new activities that you've never done before. Try to get involved with a new group of homeschoolers. Maybe there's a new co-op that you could try. Um, perhaps there is a church activity that you've never gotten involved in. Uh, my kids have attended friends' churches and their Bible studies, and somehow that just really, really engaged them where they weren't as engaged in their own church's activities. So consider something new to grow in your homeschooling field this year. Of course, I'm going to suggest to you that if you've never tried Grammar Galaxy Elementary Language Arts curriculum that is fun and fast and easy for your students, or if you've never tried fast grammar for your high school students, then I encourage you to try it for free at fundtolearnbooks.com. And I hope that it is a good fit for you, but if not, my hope is that you will find something that excites you in this new season and excites your students. Now, I am interested in hearing what you decide to do in this new season of your life. I hope you will drop me a line at homeschoolsanityinfo at gmail.com. I would love to hear about it. It would make my new season more exciting to hear from you. You can also let me know the topics and guests that you would like me to have on the show this year. You can find the link to this episode at homeschoolsanity.com slash new season. Have a happy homeschool week.